This is a brief demonstration of the new inventory application. Currently what you're seeing is the home screen of the new inventory application in state software. Up in the left-hand corner, it will define the school district, the user, and the fiscal year that you're currently in for inventory. If I move on to the core menu, this is the equivalent of the EIS MATE program and its options in Classic. So these options look very similar to what you see in Classic. I'm gonna just pick out a couple of these. The fiscal year is something new in redesign. So this is going to pull over the fiscal year, migrate over the fiscal year from Classic. So in this example, it's fiscal year 2020, and it's also going to include the dollar and life limit from DAT screen and Classic and plug that in here. And obviously, if I migrate fiscal year 2020 and Classic, over into redesign, it's going to automatically default as my current and open period. The configuration option underneath core is going to show me some of the, uh, the rest of the options from that screen, including um, last fiscal year closed, foundation percentage, and all the other options available. Most of the rest of them here are just those other miscellaneous options. Um, that are found in classic EIS main. I'm just gonna pick on one. The item categories are your category codes in here. And so when I go ahead and click on that, it's gonna display my, all my uh, existing category codes in a grid format. So similar to what you're seeing in USASR or USPSR. And in order to learn you know, what the classic counterparts are, you know, you'll get used to them while you're going in here and selecting these, but also in our user manual, um, which this is the beginning of our user manual, if I go down to the core option, whether I can click it here or click it over here to the left, um, it's going to give me a table at the beginning of each of the main menu options, core, transactions, reports, and it's going to, to list the uh, inventory option and its classic counterpart. So this is one way to learn uh, the new options just a little bit better. And then once I click there, I can go into these particular options like fiscal years and get more information about that option. Moving on to tran transactions. So this is the equivalent of the EIS screen in classic. So we've got acquisitions, dispositions, items, pending items, and transfers. And so again, if I go back to my documentation here and go down to transactions, here is my table with the classic counterparts. So if I go back here and I select items, this is basically the equivalent of item screen. And so you will see all the existing items um, that are um, on, their, on inventory and the filter row then will allow you to filter down. So I really like this. I can select just capitalized assets by starting to type in the word true and it's just gonna bring up capitalized assets. I can go in and I can get rid of that by Xing off of it. <clears throat> and I can go in and put in a specific um, item category and it filters then uh, by that specific item category. I can put in um, ranges and we all are, we are also going to add less than greater than and some of those other filters. They aren't available with the um, first version, um, but that will be an enhancement that we'll be making. Also way off to the right, you're gonna see this little blue box. This is the more option. And so if I go ahead and click on this, it'll allow me to add and remove fields or columns to my grid. And so in here, if I wanna go in and remove, um, let's see, I am going to remove, I think I'm gonna add, remove the item category here. And so when I do that, it just takes it off right away as soon as I click on it. And if I wanted to add something, I just go ahead and click on it, it's a number of items, and it will add that column. So again, if I didn't want that column, I could just click off of it once again to remove it. So it's a very quick, an easy way to add and remove items from your, from your grid. And obviously um, your grid will stay as is then. If I log off and log back in, 
this is going to be my grid from now on. So those changes will stick. So in the items grid here, I do have some options over here to view an item, edit one, or to delete. And you'll notice that some of these are grayed out because you can't just delete an item from um, five years ago. Um, so especially when it's uh, a capitalized asset. And so you will have um, obviously have to create a disposition transaction to do that. So it has the same security features that it had in Classic. I'm gonna go ahead and create an item. So this is the equivalent of adding um, an item in Classic. And so from here, I can go ahead and pull it down from my pending file. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can either use the drop down to select one, or I can go in and just start entering the uh, purchase order number. It should go and automatically filter. I'm just gonna start entering my number and it uh, displays it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. And you'll notice then is that it pulls everything in regarding that. And so from here, what I can do is go in and add my tag number. And this is obviously a tag that isn't already on file. And from there, then I'm gonna go ahead and click on continue to item then to go to um, the items window to add the rest of my information. So I'll go ahead and click on continue item and it's going to bring up the information here. And then from here, I can go ahead and start entering the rest. If I had a serial or model number, I can add that information. Um, category code, I can hit the drop down, or I can start typing it in, and it will um, put that information in here. I'll go ahead and do audio visual. And then from here, I'm going to select my fun function. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pull those in. There's my function or instruction. If I had an organization code, I can select that from the drop down and start typing it in. Same with location code. I can select a specific one or start typing it in and it'll filter down. I'm just going to scroll down here. Here is my acquisition information that got pulled in from the pending file and then my depreciation information. So some of this information gets automatically loaded too because it was in my category code, such as the life expectancy. When I went ahead and entered in that category code of audiovisual, um, it had already a life limit of 10 years. So it automatically pulled that in here. So it just saves me some time from having to enter that information. So again, the same type of features that you had in Classic. And so from here, everything else looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and just save this item. And tag number 191011 has been added. I will close out of my item and acquisition windows. And if I wanted to look that up, oops, um, you can see here it is. And it was under the threshold amount, $449, where my threshold's I think 3,000 or 5,000 uh, for the sample district. So obviously it's gonna fall as a non-capitalized asset. Now, if I wanted to add additional acquisitions to this existing item, I would go back up to transactions and click on acquisitions. And so from here, again, if I click on create, so before I get started there, here are all of the current acquisitions that migrated over from Classic. And so I wanna click on create. And when I do that, I can also pull from the pending file again. And when I do that, it's gonna pull the information in and then from here, I can go in, and if that wasn't the right one, I can click on another one. And from here, what I would do is go in and enter in the existing tag number. And so once I add that in, it's going to pull up the fund function and asset class that's tied to that tag. If I want to update the original cost um, based off, you know, the, the amount on this acquisition, uh, then I would check this box click on create, and now I have two acquisition transactions against this item. So I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this. Other options in here, dispositions. I pull this up and it's gonna show me my disposition grid. So these are all the dispositions that migrated over from Classic. And so from here, if I wanna create a disposition, I click on create and I can start entering that tag number. And it's gonna go ahead then 
and add that and pull that information in here. This must not be one that I have. Um, but if I did, it would bring it in here and it would allow me then to go in and add the disposition code. It would have all the information displayed and I would select, oh, there we go. And I would select the code. So let's say this was sold. And, um, and if I have to enter it and authorize by, maybe the superintendent. And if I did receive an amount from it being sold, I could enter that in here. Those are just informational fields. And obviously my fiscal year is in fiscal year 20. So I'm gonna change this. It reflects that fiscal year. And if this was something that should have been added in a prior year, I can click on the error adjustment. And if this was a capitalized asset, it would then show in my gap schedules an adjustment and not a true disposition. I'm gonna go ahead and click on create. And that item has now been added to my disposition grid. I'm gonna close out of here. And here's my new item. Same thing with transfers. If I go ahead and click on transfer. And again, it's going to migrate over all of my existing transfers from Classic into Redesign. And if I click on Create, I can enter in the tag number or start filtering here. So let's see. That looks good. And for this transfer transaction, I need to change the asset class. The asset class is wrong. And I can't just go in and edit an asset class on the item window. I need to create a transfer transaction against it. So again, I'm gonna make this so it's in my in fiscal year 20. And I wanna change the asset class. So it pulls up the old value. I go ahead from the drop down and select my new value. And again, if this was something that should have been documented from a prior year, I could go ahead and check mark error adjustment. And I'm just gonna go ahead and click on create. And that transfer transaction has now been added to my grid. And if I would go and look up that item, um, it would now reflect the new um, asset class code of 0400. Just to show you pending items quickly, so um, this is where your pending item information is stored. So this is the equivalent of EIS screens pending option. And so in here, when you first start, after you migrate over, you're going to want to recreate your pending file. And so you're gonna be using the pull from USAS option to pull that information in. And so what it's gonna do, it's gonna go out there into USAS R and find those items that are marked for inventory based on, click on this, on the starting date that you enter in here. And um, then it will populate your pending file. And you can take that then and compare it to your pending file from Classic. And so obviously if you need to clean anything up, you can use the delete option or you can check mark the items. I believe we're gonna add a checkbox up at the top too. Um, which will let you select all items. Um, and then you can check off the ones that you wanna keep. But for now, you can go ahead and click on the ones that you want to delete and then use the delete option and it will delete those items off of the pending file. So with um, the next option is reports. And I just wanted to show you the documentation before we get started in there. And so and this is the report. Uh, documentation, we have the gap reports, and you'll see again a table showing the name of the report in redesign and its classic counterpart. Same thing with the non-gap reports. And so you can click on one of these links to go to that specific area to see more information about that particular report. And even in here, we label the classic counterpart for that report. I'm going to go back to my uh, instance here, and I'm gonna go over to reports, and you'll notice when I hover over it, the gap reports are in its own section, so it's easy to see. So I've got the 101, 102, 103, and the 104, and then the other non-gap reports listed below it. I'm just gonna pick on the 103, just to show you. And here are the options available. If I want to uh, run this report by asset class, I can select that. 
I can generate a detail or summary. So by default, it'll be detail. So if I want an EIS 103S, basically, I would go in and select summary. I can again enter in the year or it will pick the current year. I can also have the ability to generate a um, report option uh, to show the options that I chose on the report. I'm gonna go ahead and click on generate. And it's going to generate this report. Go ahead and pull it up. All of the reports in Redesign for Inventory are canned reports. We do not have any template reports in there. And so, and all of these reports are in PDF format. And so when you look here, this looks very similar to what you're used to seeing in Classic. We have it broken down by the fund types, fiduciary, governmental, proprietary. And then again, the same type of format. This is a summary change schedule. So because I selected my asset class, it's going to break them down by my asset class, showing me my beginning value, what was acquired this year, disposed of, transferred, and adjusted this year to give me my ending balance. One thing we did add that we did not have on the classic report is a grand total, which I find very useful. So that is included on all of the uh, gap reports. And the systems menu is growing. So this is what we have out here right now. The EIS cap equivalent is the capitalization criteria, which will allow you to go in and change the threshold amounts. We have a change password, which is available in our other um, USSR and USPR options as well. Um, we have a users where you can go in and create user accounts for inventory, and we have an import option. And so what the import will allow you to do is this is the EIS IX program in Classic, their EIS import option. That's the equivalent here. So what you're going to be able to do is if you have a spreadsheet of laptops, um, Chromebooks that you need to add in, you can create that spreadsheet, upload it in here, select the import type, which for this example would be items, and then click on import, and it will mass load, mass create those items in inventory. So then they will then show up underneath transaction items when you're done. Uh, one thing also is when you import, meaning you're creating new items, um, in inventory, it's also going to create the acquisition transaction that's tied to that. We have other options in here as well. You can go in and mass dispose of items by entering those items on a spreadsheet and clicking on dispositions. That will create disposition transactions and mark those as disposed of on the item records. So we have a lot of different options available in here. And I believe that's um, the majority of the items. I just wanted to show you a quick demo of the features that are available in here. Like I said, our documentation is um, available also on our application. If you click on documentation, it's going to take you to our user manual as well. I wanna thank you for taking the time uh, to go over this with me and looking forward to hearing um, your feedback on the new application. Thank you.